These well-known concave mirrors turn solar energy into electricity, and they must constantly rotate according to the movement of the sun across the sky so that the mirrors focus the solar radiation into this receiver, and we have to pay attention that this receiver turns together with this mirror. This is another type where this receiver is absolutely motionless, but this mirror turns from morning to evening to focus the solar radiation in this way on this motionless receiver. Many of us came up with a new idea to do the opposite, namely let the mirror be absolutely motionless, while its receiver will move according to the movement of the sun across the sky. I am experimentally investigating this new idea on the example of this simple and cheap concave mirror which is absolutely motionless, and my experiments lead to the following conclusions. First, we know that similar solar heaters have complicated and expensive systems for turning their mirrors. At the same time, moving a receiver is radically cheaper than moving a large mirror because a receiver is tens of times lighter, and its wind loads are up to several tens of times less than the wind loads on a large mirror. The second conclusion relates to these metal structures which can form almost half the cost of a solar heater, but the costs of manufacturing and installing similar structures can be drastically reduced if our mirror is absolutely motionless especially if we use super cheap mirrors, and now I'm showing an example of one of the super cheap mirrors. It consists of this cheap mesh and this primitive reflective film costing 25 cents per square meter. My mirror focuses solar radiation in this way, and here the radiation can produce thermal energy with a temperature greater than 300 degrees Celsius, but we have many possibilities to increase the heating temperature. Of course, this is not the only type of super cheap mirrors, and for example, we can use similar mirror balloons. Or it can be similar super cheap mirrors, where this reflective film becomes concave due to negative pressure under this film. In addition, I plan to test several types of super cheap mirrors based on polystyrene and concrete, and I will describe these experiments in my future videos. If we choose the right type of super cheap mirrors, we can achieve this cost of our solar heat, less than 1 cent per kilowatt hour, and this is about 10 times cheaper than the cost of heat from natural gas. We can turn this cheap thermal energy into such cheap electricity by heating thermal oil inside these receivers to almost 400 degrees Celsius, which is then used to generate steam for a turbine or comes into similar heat storage to generate steam and electricity at night. Now let's see how a motionless concave mirror focuses radiation of the sun which moves from morning to evening, and I will show these phenomena with the example of this cheap mirror which creates such a spot of focused solar radiation that we can see here, and let's look at what happens from morning to evening of one day. Now it is morning, and we pay attention to this screen, and here we see that spot of radiation from my mirror. And time points of one day on the 4th of December are shown here. We see that my mirror is absolutely motionless, but the screen must move. And now I will show the same, but more slowly. We understand that this screen simulates this receiver for heating liquid up to 300 degrees Celsius by this spot of solar radiation. It was the movement of the spot during one day at the winter solstice, in December. And now I will show you the same thing, but three months later, around the spring equinox, in March. We see that this spot from my mirror is also located in the center of this screen from morning to evening. I plan to do a similar experiment around the summer solstice, in June, and around the autumn equinox, but I risk not having time to do it because I may be mobilized into the Ukrainian army which is now fighting against the Russian invaders. I must clarify the conditions that are necessary for the normal operation of our motionless mirrors, and we have to remember the following two conditions. First, the mirrors should be placed along this west-east line, and the south is there for the case of the Earth's northern hemisphere. The second condition relates to the slope angle of our mirrors, and this video analyzes the case when this angle is equal to geographic latitude. For example, now this angle is 50 degrees because this experiment is taking place at 50 degrees north latitude. 
If these two conditions are met, especially the first condition of placing mirrors along this west-east line, then the radiation spot from my mirrors is located inside this imitation of our receiver, but provided that we move the receiver from morning to evening. Now I am showing an example of an idea of a cheap system of moving receivers for a row of mirrors, because we understand that our mirrors must form similar long rows of several tens or hundreds of mirrors. Obviously, this pipe is also a path for heat transfer medium, for example, for thermal oil, which must be heated by our mirrors to a temperature of 300 or 400 degrees Celsius. We can notice the similarity of this system with such a system where a similar movement is provided by these cheap rods which are moved by this cheap system. Interestingly, the radiation spot from the mirrors will be different if we place these devices not here, but here, similar to this experiment. Now I'm showing another idea for moving receivers horizontally. We must pay attention that during one day the receiver moves in the horizontal direction, but does not move in the vertical direction, and we can notice this fact by observing the immutability of these parts. Nevertheless, we know the well-known fact that the height of the sun changes between these extreme positions of December and June, and therefore the vertical position of the receiver must also change between these positions of winter and summer solstices. Here we can see the changes in these parts and this has led to a change in the vertical position of the receiver, and these changes are similar to this action which is periodically done by me on my solar station. We see that this is a simple and quick action, and we have to do it about once a month so that our receivers change their vertical position about 10 or 12 times a year, although we have opportunities to reduce this number to the level of 6, 4 or 2 times a year. We can see that now I am changing the vertical angle of the mirrors, not the receiver, and it is obvious that we can install these parts not here, but here, and this will give us the opportunity to change the vertical angle of the mirror several times a year, rather than the receiver which will be fixed all the time, and this option might be interesting for the case of this idea that was shown a minute ago. Now I'm showing another way to change the vertical position of the receiver, without involving expensive manual labor. Now let's analyze the heat production, and this graph shows how much heat is produced by one square meter of our motionless mirror during one absolutely sunny day. We see that our motionless mirrors produce thermal energy only during these approximately 8 hours, and their maximum thermal power will be here, around noon. Now let's analyze the case of this traditional solar heater which is constantly turning together with its receiver and heat production from its one square meter is described by this graph which is noticeably better than this graph of our motionless mirror. We see that adding the ability to turn mirrors slightly increases this thermal power around noon, and drastically increases the power here in the morning, and here in the evening. That is why this heat production by turning mirrors is about two times that of the heat production by motionless mirrors, and this fact can be explained by many causes including the following three. First, the turns of a mirror ensures that the solar radiation falls on the surface of the mirror in this way, perpendicular to the mirror, all the time from morning to evening, while a motionless mirror has a bad angle of incidence of the solar radiation, especially in the morning and evening, and when we take into account its cosine, the heat production by our motionless mirror is significantly reduced. The second cause is shown by this experiment, and we must pay attention to the changes in the shape of this spot from morning to evening, and time points of one day are shown here. We see that now, around noon, this spot has a minimum size, but its size increases as evening approaches. Similarly, now we see that the closer the morning, the larger the spot size. Such an increase in the size can significantly reduce our heat production in the morning and evening. In order to understand the third cause, let's pay attention to the fact that such structures create small shadows on the surface of a mirror, and these shadows reduce its heat production. This was an example with the ability to turn mirrors, but our motionless mirrors have noticeably more shadows, and let's pay attention to this imitation of our receiver in these tubes and we see the shadows here. This is the situation in winter, 
around the winter solstice, and we see that the shadows are located above our mirror, and therefore they do not reduce its heat production, however the situation is different in spring and autumn, and for example, now I show the case around the vernal equinox in March. Here we see the shadow of the receiver, and this is the shadow of those tubes, and these shadows reduce our heat production by a few percent. We can understand that summer shadows will be located here, below the mirror, and therefore they will not reduce its heat production, and I hope that I will have time to do a similar experiment in two months, around the summer solstice. Now let's pay attention to these parts and we see their shadows here, and it is obvious that they reduce the heat production by a few percent. These were the shadows in December, but now I show them on the spring equinox, and we see that the area of the shadows has decreased by almost two times. And these shadows will continue to decrease in the days that follow, and they will not be located inside the mirror in the summer because these shadows will be here, below the mirror. However in August they will again begin to rise and cover the surface of the mirror more and more, up to such a situation at the winter solstice. Of course, in addition to the three described, there are several more causes of reducing the heat production by our motionless mirror, and I remind you that the refusal to turn our mirrors reduces their heat production by about two times, however these are approximate graphs, and sometimes that difference can be larger. That's why one square meter of our solar heaters should be two or three times cheaper compared to one square meter of solar heaters based on turning mirrors, and so we can come to the conclusion that our idea of motionless mirrors becomes economically viable only in the case of very cheap mirrors. So, these were the graphs for the equinoxes, in March and September, when the difference in the heat production between the turning and motionless mirrors was two times and this difference reaches its maximum now, around the summer solstice, in June, when the difference reaches about two and a half times. The minimum value of this difference takes place in winter, and now I show graphs around the winter solstice, in December, when this difference is about 1.75. But these graphs do not take into account losses due to snow, which can take a few percent or a few tens of percent of our winter heat production. Although the snow leaves the tilted mirror surface on its own due to a temporary thaw, or due to exposure to solar radiation even during frosts of 10 or 20 degrees Celsius below zero, 